There was a teacher who had to create a lesson and a plan to address popular sovereignty and the modern day issues at hand. This was a teacher who loves to aim high, yet she stood for a moment as these thoughts came by. What should we do? Will my students buy in? How can I prepare them for the future so we all win? She thought and thought reflected in such, research takes time, resistance can be strong. Students will ask, why can't we just sing the same old song? Earning A's while we dance along. I'll have to teach proper citation, style and such, if we're going to do this right. She closed her eyes to think and organized a plan she delivered to her kids with a wink. Little by little, I'll teach them to think, create an e-portfolio to document their work, pushing them to show personal strengths, make connections to what they already know, get them started in the land of scholarly think by doing an academic article review. Then they'll decide what they want to know, create a paper proposal that must be approved, to document where they want to go. Before I let them free, I'll teach them how to research and focus on information literacy. After much revise and revision, students will learn how to use these tools and devices to bring their authentic voice to life, conducting interviews, constructing videos that will allow them to share a powerful message. She knew it would take time to unfold, but knows the value of empowering those who will grow. So with a big leap forward, she was ready to go. All right, so we started off with a paper proposal, and then we had to like choose from a list of general topics, and then we could kind of make it our own. And so we did that, and I decided what I wanted the main question to be in my paper, and then I went down to subcategories. So once I figured that out, I could start looking, just typing in like anything that, like keywords that we thought of, and then like to find any article and use some of the library references to and then now right now what I'm doing is I'm going through like the articles that I found and just basically reading them and um, deciding how I can use them in my paper which is the annotated reference thing so and then that's just like citing it and then what's the article about and how you can use it in your paper and that's helping. How do you think it's going to be writing your first draft since you've done so much pre-work in terms of reading and annotated work site or references and um, and then in the intro you well, have to write? I still think it will be kind of hard, but the way it's been broken down helps a lot and um, getting different perspectives of the articles like different so many different sources helps a lot because you have so much to choose from. I'm kind of looking forward to the interesting information that I keep finding out, like learning about the, these political behaviors and how it affects them and how it motivates people. It's, kind of, it's very interesting to me and how part of my topic is about the emerging technologies and how they use it and it's pretty interesting how it's gotten much greater over the years and they're getting more involved in technology and how it helps, how it greatly helps them. With campaigns? Oh yeah. And, and, and just citizens in general, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of interesting. People, people are you getting more involved, like the, the presidential campaigns were using um, social media to try to gain more supporters for their campaigns and that's pretty interesting to me. Um, has any of it changed maybe how you think about or use social media or do you think about how you, yourself when you do the research? Yeah, it's it changed me a lot because now I'm starting to get more involved in it too. I, I've been looking those things up myself to research it and it's pretty interesting to me. Um, as far as the e-portfolio goes, what do you think is kind of neat about that or do you see any um, future ways to use an e-portfolio the way you're doing it? I know you're in the infancy of it. But yeah, um, it, it helps because like as soon as I'm done working on something, 
I add it to the site, which helps me. Like, I have them all other places, but if I ever need to look at a bunch of different um, papers from that one, like from this one project, I can just go on there and they're all there, which helps a lot. And then, I don't really know, you can make a site, so <laughs> it's kind of cool. And um, then I can use it if I ever need to in the future with other projects or whatever it comes to be. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, your site could tell someone about you? Um, I think it's a formal way of like getting them to um, know me and like before they meet me in person or even after they can get a, like a more insight without me going to wait like so much detail about my project they can just see it for themselves. Good. And good. and you you mentioned being able to update and you know it's important because being able to constantly grow your portfolio is huge because that shows how you learn and how you develop and the accomplishments that you've you've been making throughout the process, right? Yeah. Because you know when we see the final product and I'm I'm guessing yours is going to turn out really well. Okay, because of all the work that goes into it, and I really think the e-portfolio allows you to show the process, right? Yeah, that way you can see like where you started from and where you finished, and there's going to be such a big difference. And then like the technology part of it is like crazy because we didn't have that, and now we do. Are you excited about making oh, your yeah. own documentary? Oh yeah. Are you I, going to I, be creative? <laughs> yes, I've always I've always been interested in making my own films. I thought it, I think it's a cool idea, and I really I did I'm glad that we're doing this because then I really get to try to do it myself. And you see how it's going to bring your research further, right? Oh, yeah. It's not just going out running around with a camera, but how to use the camera in a meaningful way, yeah. right, with different angles. Digital content can be created anywhere at any place. Carolyn Habig wants her students to understand how technology gives them the opportunity to create a powerful message. Habig teaches students to use camera angles and cinematic language to intelligently capture interviews and a moving image. To help students understand the basics of being a better documentarian, Habig enlists Susan Kearns, the Education Director of Milwaukee Film. Students relished in the opportunity to learn from Ms. Kearns' work ask questions, and most importantly, use her tips to bring their research to life. After Habig utilized a variety of Web 2.0 tools to further engage her students in an ongoing academic research and writing process, she worked hard to help students explore how their research translates into real life. Today, students can go well beyond traditional research and writing. After bettering their writing skills, they can create digital media products, publish their work, maximize social media platforms, and share feedback, documenting the process of their learning. Students are using real-world tools to engage in a dynamic learning process. Habig students created e-portfolios to document the progression of their work, helping them to grow as knowledgeable digital citizens. Creating interview questions is also a multi-step process. Habig introduces her students to Google Docs, modeling how to use online tools to create, share, and revise their interview questions. Habig believes that by teaching her students to ask smart, critical interview questions, her students will improve their chances for creating better content. Online tools give students and teachers the chance to engage in ongoing collaboration. Recently, a classmate and I met at Carthage College with Ms. Habig and a colleague of hers to discuss the corrections or suggestions that they both made to our papers. Um, some of the suggestions she made was on my paper were to not use so many pronouns such as they. Uh, it's too vague and it's hard to understand what they is in my paper it could be multiple different things I just need to explain more and also synthesizing I feel like she is correct when I'm just writing down what the author says in the articles I need to synthesize more and explain my opinion and impact on what I think the articles are saying and how it relates to my topic um, I plan on using the suggestions and corrections she made to my paper because it will help it out and help create a better final draft in the end.
In order to take the authenticity of her project to the highest level, Caroline Habig organized a field trip to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where her students had the opportunity to interview leading researchers, professors, and university students who specialized in the content of her kids' work. Specifically, students toured the university's research center, which is the second largest survey research center in the nation. Students asked questions about how research is conducted, experienced first-hand accounts of researchers in action, and witnessed how different types of technology are being used to collect data and to better understand how technology has changed survey research. Caroline Habig knows that teenagers love to see how people close to their own age can be active in creating a change. Habig students interviewed undergraduate campus Democrat and campus Republican chairmen in order to understand these young adults' motivation to make a positive change on campus and get involved in politics. Habig students were excited to see how involved people similar in age are in politics and their leadership roles within their campus organizations. No project is complete without reflection along the way. After a very busy morning, Habig students used their laptops to create video reflections, documenting their learning. Students then immediately uploaded their reflections to YouTube and posted them to their Google Sites. Habig's use of real-world tools and devices seamlessly connects the learning our students do inside and outside of the classroom. So far, the most interesting thing that I thought of this trip was the um, the interview with the college representatives. I think it was it was interesting because of how close they are in our age to our age, and um, how closely we can relate to them in um, getting involved in politics and in the community. I learned from the research center survey center that when asking questions. They want to um, try not to use the word not because it's too confusing to the people reading the questions and trying to answer them because it causes them to um, think. It could make them think different views of the question, so they want a straight up answer of the question and they don't want people to think well does it take off this way is it going that way and by going or straining away from using not you will get end up getting unbiased answers after lunch students had the opportunity to interview a graduate student who used to work uh, at the so new york times Hey, big students wanted to further explore how changing trends in journalism, social media, and the web have changed how journalists and people obtain and share information in the information age. After working diligently to improve their research, learning how to write academic papers, students eagerly interviewed members of the political science department to gain deeper insight into their topics. And no information-based excursion would be complete without a stop at the Wisconsin Historical Society. In order to continually show their progress, students would post different cuts of their films on their sites. Habe created and shared a Google Doc with all her students so she and her students could actively give feedback to each other about their films. Caroline Habig uses technology to help all students share and document their thinking, providing ways for students to revisit the powerful conversations from class. Hi, I'm Becky Hawkins and this is my Reflection 3. Um, when I got my Film Cut 1 feedback, it was mostly just figuring out my exact storyline. Because when I first did my draft, it was mainly just get everything down, all the information you want to use, cut out the parts of the interview, and try to mesh it all together. But now that I got it all laid out, kind of like the blueprint, I need to really figure out what's my storyline, who are my characters, and how can I link all this information together, all my different topics, and how can I just complete make them um, all one topic in one film and make it so it makes sense to my audience and how they mesh together. Another thing I need to do which will help my storyline is make narrations because I need to show first of all this is my project and I did the work so 
I think it will be good showing my audience that I know what I'm talking about and that I can explain what's going on. And also, these narrations will help me like explain the information and introduce each topic, which it will be really nice. And for my paper, I need to fix my conclusion, which is like the biggest part I need to fix. I need to add more like, of what I talked about in my paper part to the conclusion so that it's more of a conclusion, not just like random facts. And I also need to take out a citation I have in there because you can't cite in a conclusion since it's your own words. So I need to take that out and a bunch of just little grammar. And that's about it for my paper. Hibig also uses iOS devices to capture live audio feedback. She then emails to her students for them to reflect on later. Throughout this project, students have used devices and apps to take notes, capture live audio, helping students to document their learning at all stages of the project. Caroline Habig wants her students to understand that their course content is deeply embedded in the real world. Not only did she want her students to read and write about the psychological factors that shape political behavior, but she wanted them to explore the real world motivations and people working to better their communities and society as a whole. Specifically, Habig organized interviews with community leaders and political representatives. Students are challenged to tell the story of motivation, hard work, and finding ways to make a better tomorrow. Students ask powerful questions and use their camera to bring these interviews to life. Students are empowered by the opportunity to carry their voice outside the classroom by creating a digital product and film used to educate the larger community and beyond. Hello, this is Tyler Shen, the creator of this ePortfolio. I feel that the ePortfolio is an excellent way to display my academic accomplishments. I feel that it is a great way to show what kind of person I am academically and outside of school. The thing that I am most proud of from my ePortfolio is the amount of work that I have posted on this website. I am also proud that all of the work on my website shows progression. It shows how a rough start can turn into an excellent piece of work. One element featured on my website is my film project, The Power of One. The Power of One is a documentary that uncovers the psychology behind politics. Throughout the film, I interview a wide range of individuals, including a former New York Times reporter, University of Wisconsin-Madison professors, graduate students, as well as political leaders from state and local government. Please view my film and enjoy. In addition to publishing online, Caroline Habig and her students are currently working to organize a public screening of their film. <laughs>